Hey guys, in this video we'll be talking about the general rules of significant figures. In a separate video, I'll go over detailed calculations and we'll do a lot of examples in that video. And that video should be linked at the end of this one, or you can also find that in the description below. To start off, let's do a refresher on rounding rules. So when we round, first things uh, first, identify which place value you're rounding to. Second, look at the number to the right of that place value to figure out how you're going to round. So for example, round 1.38 to the nearest tenth. So we're looking at the tenth place value, so that's the first step, identify that, and I've underlined that place value. And we look to the number to the right of that place value, which is in the hundredths place, which is the 8, so I circled that. The 8 is going to tell us if we should round up or down. And if the number on the right, that's going to tell us what to do. If that's less than 5, we round down. And if that number is greater than or equal to 5, we round up. So in this case, 1.38 would be rounded to 1.4. And another way to remember this is how I learned it. Think of a hill and 5 is at the top. If you roll something like a ball and you stop it anywhere before 5, it rolls back down. If it's at 5 or in, in, at any point afterwards, it's going to roll forward. So that's just a refresher on rounding. If you have any questions, be sure to comment below and I'll try to get to as many questions as possible. Now, let's actually get to talking about significant figures. Why do we need significant figures? Well, if you think about physics or chemistry, they're dealing with real-world applications. And numbers in real-world applications are generally obtained through measurements. And when we do calculations, we want to make sure that those calculations aren't more precise than the measurements we start with to make those calculations. So the whole point of significant figures is to ensure that answers to a calculation isn't more precise than the measurements used to make that calculation. And as we do examples, it will become more evident in why we need it and also how to make sure that the calculation isn't more precise. So some of the rules for significant figures are, number one, all non-zero integers are significant. So any numbers between 1 and 9 are significant. So those are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All those numbers are significant. All zeros to the left of the first non-zero digit are not significant. They're simply just placeholders. So for example, 0 0.00032 only has two significant figures. That would be the 3 and the 2. They're non-zero integers, and anything to the left of that are not significant. If we have zeros between non-zero digits, all of those zeros are significant. So in this example, we have 0 0.08005, and in this case, we have four significant figures. That's the 8, the two zeros, and the 5. All zeros at the end of a number that has a decimal point are significant. So if we have 45.00, that has four significant figures. And if we have 48.20, that's also four significant figures. The zeros at the end of a whole number without a decimal point are not significant. So, 400 has only one significant figure. That would be the 4. However, if it was 400 and there was a decimal point at the end, now we would have had three significant figures. To avoid confusions like this, we generally use scientific notation, but we'll take care of that in a separate video also. And the last thing that I want to talk about are exact numbers. In exact numbers, we don't limit the number of significant figures. 
an exact number can have an infinite number of significant figures. So in this case, you don't have to worry about significant figures. And exact numbers are counted numbers. For example, if I said there are 24 students in this class, we can say with certainty that there are 24 students. We can count and make sure there's no approximation, no estimate. It's an exact number. We don't have half of a student, which, which would be kind of scary. So we know there are exactly 24 students. Exact relations are also exact numbers. We know there is 100 centimeters and 1 meter. There's no uncertainty about that. So if we use this as a conversion factor, we don't have to worry about significant figures. So, so hopefully the video helped. If you have a question, don't hesitate to leave a comment. In separate videos, I'll go over addition and subtraction with significant figures and multiplication and division with significant figures. If you haven't already subscribed, take care and I'll see you guys next time.